Happy Friday, everybody. It is Sandy from Sandy's Books and Beauty for the Ages. I can say it that time, time fast. Okay, first, I want to thank the fabulous Charmaine for giving me a shout out today. Much love. And I can't wait to do Mask Monday with you. And I will list her down below, so you should go check out her channel. And she's, I think she's still having a giveaway. I'm pretty sure. Go check out her channel and find out. Mm. Go check out her channel. I forgot to put the ring light on. Oops. Oop. A little more lighting. Hallelujah. I live in the dark like a vampire, so what can I tell you? Okay. What I'm doing today is, if you see behind me, there's a cart. And this cart... It contains all of my TBRs. There's many, many, many of them. And there's many more in the shelf next to me. And there's some in the shelf behind me. And don't get me started on my Kindle. Just don't. Because I will never, ever read all the books in there. Because there are thousands of them. What can I say? I love books. I love makeup. I love books. But this is about books. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a... Halloweenish TBR because I haven't gotten a chance to read a thing. And this is only some of the books that I am going to suggest. And I haven't even read them yet. But I have read things by the author. So I do know the author stuff. <clears throat> the first one is uh, One by One with Ruth Ware or anything by Ruth Ware. She is fantastic at doing, you know, the twists that you don't see coming and, you know, whodunits and, and stuff like that. Awesome suspense. And there's also book club questions in here. It could be a book club thing. Now that I'm in the book club. Next, by E. Lockhart, we have We Were Liars. This is more of like a September type of read. However, I haven't, I have not seen the book. Netflix series. I'm not watching that until I read the book. So I'm going to read the book. And the book says, if anyone asks you how it ends, just lie. We are Sinclairs. We live, at least in the summertime, on a private island off the coast of Massachusetts. Massachusetts. My hometown. Home state. Perhaps that is all you need to know, except that some of us are liars. And let me read the Ruth Rare one because I didn't read that one. I think I just threw the book on the floor. Bad me, bad. Okay, so she's the Agatha Christie of our generation, evoking the snowy seclusion of a dark, dark wood, which I have that too and I haven't read it yet. Oh, oh that's not, that's not, that's a, that's not the description. I almost said subscription. Getting snowed in in a luxurious rustic ski chalet high in the French Alps doesn't sound like the worst problem in the world, especially when there's a breathtaking vista. A full service chef and housekeeper, a cozy fire to keep you warm and others to keep you company. Unless that company happens to be eight co-workers, each with something to gain, something to lose and something to hide. So that's on Jimmy. Next up, and I know this is an older one, but I haven't read this one yet either, is The Silent Patient by Alex Michael Michaelides. I'm probably saying that wrong, but this is supposed to be a really popular book. And this is kind of my, one of my jams. Um, Alicia, somebody's life is seemingly perfect until one night when her husband, Gabriel, returns home late from work and Alicia shoots him five times in the face and then never speaks another word. Alicia's refusal to talk or give any kind of explanation turns into a domestic tragedy, into, uh, turns a domestic tragedy into a mystery that captures the public's imagination. And she, the silent patient, is hidden away from the tabloids at the Grove, a secure psychiatric unit 
in North London. Criminal psychotherapist Theo Fair Faber, Faber is captivated. I really need to start using glasses, man. I do. I do. By Alicia's story and jumps at the opportunity to work with her. His determination to get to her to talk and unravel the mystery of why she shot her husband will take him down a path more unexpected and more terrifying than he ever imagined. So that sounds like a nice little horror story. Who done it? Uh, the next one is The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. I positively love Grady Hendrix. He's a great writer. Or she? Is he? Oh my god, I don't know. It's a he. Tis a he. He, I'm reading another book right now of his. It's a zombie book. I don't, I don't remember the name of it because it's in the other room where I'm reading it. But his stuff is amazing. The Southern, the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. That was incredible. I absolutely love that book and that's kind of what got me hooked. But the final girl's support group is, in horror no movies, the final girl is the one who's left standing when the credits roll. The one who fought back, defeated the killer, and avenged her friends. The one who emerges bloodied but victorious. But after, she, after the sirens fade and the audience moves on, what happens to her? Lynette Tarkington is a real-life final gal who survived a massacre 22 years ago, and it has defined every day of her life since, and she's not alone. Ooh. For more than a decade, she's been meeting with five other actual final girls and their therapist in a support group for those who survived the unthinkable, putting their lives back together piece by piece. That is until one of the women misses a meeting and Lynette's worst fears are realized. Someone knows about the group and is determined to take their lives apart piece by piece. But the thing about these final gals is that they have each other now and no matter how bad the odds, how dark the night, how sharp the knife, they will never ever give up. So yeah, this is like, this is a good book club recommendation as well. Okay, so then I've got, okay, I have another Ruth Ware book, so I'll just show you that one. It's The Death of Mrs. Westaway. So that's on my TBR list. I have so many scary books on my TBR list, and I'm mostly like a romance and other things type of reader. I like romantic suspense, too. Okay, so this one is they're saying he's a monster, and they're saying she knew the serial killer's wife. I've been like dying to get into this one. And this one is every marriage has its secrets. Beth and Tom Hardcastle are the envy of their neighborhood. They have the perfect marriage, the perfect house, and the perfect family. When police knock on their door one evening, Beth panics. Tom should be back from work by now. What if he's crashed his car? She fears the worst. But the worst is beyond imagining. As the interrogation begins, Beth will find herself questioning everything she believed about her husband. They're saying he's a monster, and they're saying she knew. So that one looks good. The last one is kind of kitschy, and it's by Grady Hendrix as well. And I think it was the first thing he came out with, and it's called Horror Store. And this is just so comical. This reads like an Ikea novel, but it's like kind of a horror story. It's a horror story mixed with an Ikea novel. Like there's actual products that they've made in here. And it's, it's really great. You know, it just looks like it's a not menu from Ikea as well, but it's not Ikea. It's about what happens to the two people in the store. I believe it's something strange is happening at the oak furniture superstore orsk sorry not oak orsk o-r-s-k furniture superstore in cleveland ohio every morning employees arrive to find broken cajuring bookshelves shattered glands water goblets and smashed weary pip 
wardrobes. Sales are down, security cameras reveal nothing, and store managers are panicking. To unravel the mystery, these employees volunteer to work a nine hour dusk till dawn shift in the dead of night. They'll patrol the empty showroom floor, investigate strange sights and sounds, and encounter horrors that defy the imagination. A traditional haunted house story in a thoroughly contemporary setting. Horror Store is designed to retain its luster and natural appearance for a lifetime of use. Pleasingly proportional with generous French flaps and a soft cover binding, Horror Store delivers the psychological terror you need in the elegant package that you deserve. So I'm very excited to read this and it's been on my TBR for a while. So that's it for right now. I have more, lots more, but this is kind of my next TBR list that I wanted to get done. So what are your recommendations? Give me your book recommendations down below. And if you could please give me a like and, you know, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell for all the future notifications, I would be so thrilled. And I am sending out much love to you all. And I hope you have a fantastic weekend. And that's it. Stay you. Bye.